So uh, most of you know me and have known me for some time. So um, I feel like I don't have a lot to say or share. But um, I, I, as I was kind of thinking about being here and talking about work, um, <coughs> excuse me, I was kind of thinking about, well, when was that first time or how long have I been dedicating uh, myself and you know, giving up other things to dedicate to making things. And I mean, I, I guess that the most vivid memory is probably around third grade is when um, I remember actively choosing to like go to art class or learn other, you know, drawing, pottery, any kind of making activity. And that was pretty consistent um, since that point. And I've always really tried to um, kind of dabble in a lot of things. So I feel like I, I have a lot of experiences, but I'm definitely not an expert in a lot of them. But I have, you know, experienced book binding and working with clay and ceramics, um, some drawing, painting. Uh, so I've really got to kind of expand all of those like mediums. But I tend to kind of gravitate back towards <coughs> textiles. And um, I was also trying to figure out like why that might be like. And the best thing I could come up with is that I tend to gravitate towards um, texture and color. And that's always kind of something that's appeared in all those different things that I've experienced. So if it's like clay, I'm doing like the printing in the clay and the crazy glazes. If it's, you know, drawing, I'm pushing with a colored pencil as hard as I can on the paper to get the most vivid color I can. And then I might sew on it. And so I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. I've started to like, like gra this, there's some succinct things that are happening, which is exciting because I feel like I've, you know, I just kind of keep dabbling around. Um, and I did study uh, fashion design in undergrad, um, which sort of gave me a slight opportunity to start working <coughs> with textiles other than just um, making them into clothing or having a like function for the textiles. And so I did get to, that was the first time I really got to experience um, just, you know, learning that different fibers make different um, types of material and learning about dyeing and learning about actually printing, which I do now and what you're seeing in this show, which is um, a surface design process. Uh, typically, I mean, I don't always feel comfortable calling it block printing because it's not in the traditional form of a wood carved block that I have carved. Um, but it, it pulls from that tradition, and it feels like the easiest way to explain what I'm doing <laughs> is block printing. Um, and so <coughs> most of what you're seeing is um, fabrics that I've chosen. Um, I, at this point, I tend to mainly work with linens and hemp's where you see some of the fiber, but it's still, uh, I guess, smooth enough that you can get ink on it. Um, and... And I'm still kind of exploring that, like trying new different new fabrics all the time. And then on those fabrics, I'm using single, single um, shapes or images, and there's a couple different kinds here, uh, to make then a larger print. So I'm, I'm combining single things together to make a whole. Um, some of the blocks I've used, and I'm still also working on those, are <laughs> linoleum, um, varying thicknesses. So some of you guys have probably done this. This is like the more modern version of a block print, is the closest I can get, is that you're actually carving into something and creating an image. And then I've kind of discovered accidentally, um, I live with a carpenter, so I get a lot of off cuts of wood. And if I glued things to that wood, then I can make my own stamps, but it's almost the reverse, right? These are more raised, whereas you know, like these I'm carving away and this I'm adding. Um, and I'm learning, you know, both of these behave very differently on different textiles. Um, and sometimes I like how this works. It's a little bit more evident that a hand has made the print because it's not even. And sometimes I really like how this works because it almost it behaves more like a screen print. And I don't know, does everyone know what a screen print is? Yeah, pretty much. You guys know what a screen print is? up in this front row action. <laughs> so a screen print is literally a screen, like if you were, can imagine a screen door, and you can put an image on it and run ink through that image, right? In the screen, there's little tiny holes, 
and you can make ink go through it. So this behaves more like a screen print because it has crisp edges and it's very solid. And so I'm still working on that. So, and for those of you in the front, you guys, you've said you've experienced these a little bit more. So you probably remember that you're rolling. So each print I do, <coughs> excuse me, is mixing the inks. So whatever colors I'm feeling like at the time that I'm working in my studio, I don't always have a plan. And then I roll it all out. And then that gets transferred onto the block. And I have to make sure if I want it to like look like it's finished that I actually put it evenly over the whole thing. And then I have to decide when I'm looking at my fabric, depending on if it's maybe a square or a rectangle. I usually work in geometric shapes. They're either squares or rectangles. Um, how do I want this to behave? Do I want it to maybe be a row of all the same image? Do I want to take six of my stamps and put them all together and see what happens? Do I want to create a pattern as I'm printing? So those are all decisions I'm making each time I come to print. And for better or for worse, at this point, I rarely make a print again in the same way. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not usually, um, I don't always use mix the same colors. I don't mix such massive quantities of ink that I could have it for many years to come. Um, so everything kind of changes, you know, pretty regularly, I would say. And I'm always kind of thinking of new um, shapes and things that I would like to work with as stamps. And so those kind of appear um, as I continue to do shows. And so yeah, it's kind of an ever, ever evolving process. Um, but I'm kind of starting to narrow in on some themes. And yeah. I often have not really ever been a realist as well when I work. I'm not really good at that. I tend to gravitate towards more geometric shapes or abstracted shapes. So I might and think about things that I often pull from nature. So I, I look to my surroundings quite a bit um, and kind of almost simplify those shapes that I'm seeing to then create um, a stamp. So Amen's a good friend, and she knew that I had been um, this was actually a, my version of a milkweed stamp. So I had been hiking out in Meadowbrook. Um, I think Bear had just happened, which was a performance piece. Um, and there was a ton of these milkweed seeds. And I was like, that is like the coolest shape. I don't know why it just occurred to me now, but I really wanted to do something with that. And this is my iteration. So it's, if you were to look at an actual milkweed pod or a seed, much more detailed. Um, so this is kind of my breaking down of those shapes into you know, this form. So I often am thinking about either things that I've seen or patterns that I've come across. It's like this visual library that keeps building that I might be like, oh, I really want to do something linear with a lot of lines, or I'm really into triangles, or I, you know, these kind of take on more of a you know, like a flower form or something uh, botanical. And, um, and yeah, and some stamps, you know, I make them and I don't like them, so they don't end up getting used as much. But uh, <coughs> it's always evolving and I'm always kind of learning how, what I like together. Um, and yeah, keep building on that. I don't know if there's any other questions. Right now is a very busy time for myself and other artists because of the holiday season. And if you are doing shows locally, this seems to be a good time to, there's quite a bit going on. So I will be doing two other home shows. Um, there's a show in Champaign. It's called the Old, I don't know, Old Town Market, I believe. Um, and it's a two day show. And then I'll also be doing another awesome show with Jill, the uh, Procrastinators Party, very close to uh, the Christmas holiday, which will be super fun. So those are two, um, yeah, I just, sorry, I'm laughing. My mom's trying to give me some cues here. She's like, <laughs> don't forget, it's hooey procrastinator. It's kind of, it's, it's become, 
Yeah, it's become at one. <laughs> and uh, and I yeah, I mean I I hope to kind of I've migrated into making home goods that are maybe potentially more accessible. I kind of like to think of it as slightly more accessible and usable art. Um, so it's not always in a frame. Doing this show was a little bit of a challenge for me because I have never thought about printing the way I print in a framed capacity. I'm usually thinking about it as a towel or a pillow or something that you would be using in your home. Or, yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure about other shows that I might be thinking about or doing. Um, right now I'm kind of just focusing on the goods that I'm making. Oh, I do. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not as uh, as good as this as I thought I might be. Um, so yes, I have a website. Uh, it's www. dot same street studio. A lot of s's. dot com. And um, and I will just mention because there are a lot of folks that have maybe lived here a long time or they feel like they've lived here a long time. Um, the reason I chose Same Street, it's actually Same Street Textiles and Scrapyard. And uh, <coughs> when I was brainstorming <coughs> with my spouse about names, I got a lot of eh, eh, eh. And um, yeah, it's a, you're a good editor, it's OK. But I, we kind of landed. I really liked this idea that I grew up here in Urbana. I grew up on Oregon Street, very close to Leo School, and I now live on East Oregon Street. And I liked this idea of that it's it's the same street. I'm still here. I'm on the same street, All right. <laughs> different side. <laughs> and um, and I have my studio is also at happens to be in my home as well. So that was kind of another impetus. It's like this is where it's happening. This is what I'm doing. Um, and I felt like that was a, an important connection for me as I thought about kind of like all these things that I've done in this community that have led to this, this process. So I think that's it. Hello. I am Jill Miller. My business name is Huey Batiks, B-A-T-I-K-S. And Batik is basically writing with melted wax. So if you've ever dyed Easter eggs and you've written your name on a crayon, then put it in the dye and you can see your name. That's, that's kind of what Batik is. So I brought all sorts of things that I use to put my designs on. And I learned this when a million years ago, about 20 years ago, I took a class at the U of I called Recreational Arts and Crafts, and the camp crafts, pretty much. <coughs> so two days out of the semester, I learned tie-dye and batik. And so with batik, you use wax, which I melt, of course. I've got a hot pot, put my wax in the hot pot, and then you can draw your designs on. And these are called chantings, and I'll, I'll go ahead and pass them around so you can see what they do. There's um, a little reservoir that, that you, you scoop up your wax, and then it drips out of the very end, so you can draw fine lines with it. You can fill in larger spaces with sponge brushes. There are also stamps. This is a copper stamp that uh, came from Thailand. And I'll go ahead and pass this around. So you, sorry, you, you stick that in your wax and then you stamp it on your shirt and your design comes out, let's see, looking like this. So I stamped it, I did stamp, 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 like that. And then to get a stripy sleeve, I use the sponge brushes to, to do that. So that shirt starts out white? Yes, yeah. Everything starts out white. Um, and here is a quick example, or I don't know how quick it is. This is the process with uh, some muslin. And, and with, with the dyeing and the waxing, I do use 100% cotton 
linen, natural things because polyester doesn't really work well with the dye. So this is a piece that is all white. I, I just waxed what I wanted to stay white and I drew this freehand and so when I put it in light blue dye, this is what it looks like. So everything that gets covered in wax is protected from the dye and everything else turns blue. And then I waxed what I wanted to stay light blue. And then I put it in yellow dye, which turned it green. Or the, the parts that, that were protected stayed green. And then when I put it in pink dye, this turned a crazy green color. And there's, you can see the pink here because when the dye hardens, it cracks and then it seeps into the cracks. So this is the finished product. There you go. I think that's it. Does anyone have any questions? They do get clogged um, with cats and dogs and all of that. They, I, um, from the co-op, the twist ties, you know, that, that you get, I, I have to um, strip the paper from part of the twist tie and just sort of jam it in there and unclog it. Yeah. 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 Hooey was my cat. When I was trying to come up with a business name, it just happened that I had to put Hooey to sleep. And uh, I thought it would, would be a good, good honor <laughs> for Mr. Hooey, who was ju just like a goofy cat. And I do a lot of sort of silly designs. And so, No, um, 20 years experience is, is <laughs> makes it look easy. Yeah. And uh, I do do stencils too. Another, another uh, this is a, a stencil that's very waxy. So if I want a circle, I can trace around it. Um, so I do stencils in freehand. Yeah. I went to school for sociology. And I managed to get my degree, uh, but what, once I took the, the class on how to batik, I really didn't stop. And there was a lot of skipped classes when I stayed home and had to batik, because you know, you have to when you find your thing. Um, and so I, I just kind of had part-time jobs and little jobs, and my dad, is, is the guy who said, you need to sell this. And so my very first show was in Williamsville at Autumn on the Boulevard and maybe a hundred people came. And it was, it was a very nice ease into the art show world. Um, and by art show world, that is, I, I do uh, street fairs, art fairs, fine craft fairs. Um, not year-round, probably March through December. I go to cities all around, um, mostly Illinois, but um, I, I do Iowa and surrounding states. And I, I've been doing it for 20 years, and um, my family has, has just been great. They uh, are always there to help me out and, and give me the push to, to keep going. So. I, uh, I'm still, still bumbling along. Uh, I, I'm selling online. I'm still doing the art fairs. Um, I'm organizing as, uh, in, instead of just going to art fairs, I am organizing some on my own. And uh, there are some around here. Just did one in Springfield that Laura was at, and it was a lot of fun. We're doing the home show. Uh, 22 and 23 of December, so it's practically Christmas. Uh, therefore, pokey procrastinators party. Um, yeah.
Yeah, it depends on, uh, the, the dye I use is a fiber reactive dye. And you can use just a little bit to get a light color or, or a whole bunch or an overnight soak to get a really vibrant color. So, so like with, with the purple, I let that stay in the dye overnight just because I wanted a, a really rich purple. But uh, it depends on the fabric. Um, depends on the amount of dye and, and how long I'm dying. I'm bad at balance. <laughs> I need to go home and work again. Yeah, I, I get uh, so excited about some things, like the show we just did this weekend. I, I was all over, everywhere online when I should have been in the basement. And so I, I uh, maybe Laura can answer the question better than me about balance. And, and you've got a family. I've got cats. And I have to take pictures of the cats. That's always on my list of things to do. I mean, it's, it is a challenge. And I, I think there are, in talking to other makers um, and artists that use that platform really as a way to maintain their business, um, it's a very a diligent um, yeah, your 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 office managing that por portion. I think um, I I have not. I feel like I haven't done the full crossover. Um, I I don't have an Etsy shop, um, and that was partially because I didn't think I could maintain it. It and, is hard to maintain. Um, yeah, and I tried uh, another avenue of having um, choosing a web platform. So I built my own website off of a you know. Uh, Wix, a Wix site that I then created my own version of, kind of, and they have online sales platforms as well. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe if I just contain it, I have the means to. Um, and then that even seemed to be actually quite daunting. And so I would say more often than not, because it's very easy to send money now electronically. Oh, that's a good job. Um, <laughs> You know, if someone messages me, I'm just like, here's photos, here's what I have, PayPal. So, um, oh, nice job. It, 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 I think it can, you know, in the showing of what you do, in the maintaining of a practice, it can be an excellent photo journal and a dialogue and photos. Um, that to me is though also hard in talking about like how hard it is to just do that every day. It kind of, that part gets left out. Um, <coughs> but I, I, I think in order to, I, I mean, and this is my only opinion, but I, uh, I think in order to like survive, I think as a small business um, artist, maker, I think you have to engage yeah. and participate in, in that e-commerce in some capacity um, and kind of negotiate how you, know, how you can best use it. Um, so, I mean, it's like one of those things where I'm like, man, if like 20 years ago I would have got in on Etsy, I would have been like, boom. Um, wasn't ready at that time, so I do feel like, you know, but it still seems to be the, the predominant kind of, you know, platform for folks making things in small capacities, you know. It has now expanded to many yeah. other things, which I think is a different conversation, but. Yeah, that um, is a totally different conversation. I think it is. I mean, I almost find it as like a, you know, it's like, all right, you know, you do some work, you take some photos, you post, you, you know, you let things dry, you post, and then you, you know, do the next step. And then, you know, if I know I'm like <laughs> cranking out, I'll take a bunch of photos, and that way I have like a library for the week where I may not be in the studio, but I have some images to post. So, I mean, I think you kind of work around, you know, your personality and your work practice, yeah. but. <laughs> um, I've, I mean, I enjoy it too, though, just for the visual eye candy. Like, you can really find your your tribe and, like, just see the things you want to see. <laughs> so, um, for better or for worse, that's been kind of fun. So. Nope, I, I have really? one. Yeah. Oh, me too. Or wash and dryer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, my whites have little specks of, of dye. Just I, I can't, I can't contain it. It, uh, it's everywhere. But uh, I don't wear white anywhere. Yeah, yeah, just you know anymore. that that much white. It's hard. You can't wear white.
That'd be like a dream. Like, oh, these are my business washer and dryer. <laughs> Sounds dreamy. That is a dream, yeah. To get involved and support the Urbana Public Arts Program, please contact the Public Arts Coordinator Rachel Storm at rlstorm at urbanaillinois.us or 217-328-8265.